Well, everyone, after six seasons, three conference championships, two March Madness victories, and the program turnaround of a lifetime, the Tennessee Martin tenure of the College Chiefs 2K Legacy Mode has come to an end. Welcome to the final episode of the series, guys. We've been through it all with these Skyhawks, and it has been one hell of a ride, that's for sure. However, it's time for greener pastures as Coach Carter will mull over his job offers from bigger schools and higher profile conferences in the next episode, and we'll find out the next stop in this series. But today, in this episode, we'll be living with UT Martin one last time as I present you a top 15 games, moments, plays, etc. from Coach Carter's six-year coaching career at Tennessee Martin. We've had some memorable times here with guys featuring Jacques Diggs, Marcus Saunders, Christopher Fay, Blaine Fry, Shaq Hammond, Teron Gardner, Pierre Hamilton, Luke Lawton. The list really goes on and on of players that left their mark on this school. The fans, and most importantly you guys, the viewers of my channel. So today, it'll be one final look back on the top 15 moments from this series, and the next time we check in with Coach Carter, we'll be deciding on what school we'll be making more memories with in his second D1 coaching stop. Really hope you enjoy the video today, guys. Let's run out of the tunnel one last time at the Skyhawk Arena to relive the top 15 moments of this series. Let's get it started, and I hope you enjoy. Let's start off this list with number 15, UT Martin taking down Belmont in the beginning of season two. The Belmont Bruins were a long time rival for us throughout the entirety of the series and the reason why that was the case you may be wondering, well you'll find that out near the end of this list trust me. The Skyhawks lost their leading scorer from season 1 to graduation, 6'9 forward Shaquille Hammond, so finding out who would lead the offense in season 2 was a huge storyline for us coming in and you could tell with the appear of you know, the lack of chemistry through the first half. UT Martin trailed this game by double digits heading into the locker room. But thanks to huge second halves by junior wing David Giles, he started to step up his game in Season 2. And of course, up and coming two guard Marcus Saunders, you see him with the end one here. He became a legend in this series. All that set up a very clutch play by a point guard, Dwight Easley. Very good X's and O's coach. We'll see what he has drawn up out of the timeout. A pick and roll between Ballard and Easley. And then he has Saunders flashing out to the corner. A great play call as Marcus Saunders has points number 15 and 16 off of the play off of the timeout so trying to foul here but wait coach carter instructs his team not to foul they want to see if they can rip it first easily pressuring keontae grant picks his pocket off to the races no one's back to stop the 6-1 sophomore easily with another tough game but if there's one thing we know about the makeup of this kid it doesn't matter how bad of a game he's had he's going to keep his head in all the way through such a hard worker as he steps up and makes a huge play as UT Martin looks to stay undefeated. Number 14, a former player who transferred out of UT Martin returns to tip off season five. Joey Ballard was a very physically gifted player, a 6'8 forward standing at 270 pounds, was a very strong athlete, great defender, and he was back on season one's roster to begin this series and found his niche by doing the dirty work on the court. However, as a junior, Ballard broke his foot and was sidelined for two months and that's what opened up the door for Luke Lawton to find his groove as Lawton was moved to the starting five in Ballard's absence, and he never looked back. After Ballard returned from that foot injury, Coach Carter continued to give the nod to Luke due to Joey Ballard never really improving his offensive game in his career. And after that season, he decided to transfer to Northern Colorado. You gotta give him credit. He's a young man who wanted to play, and he got that opportunity as he was the only senior on this Northern Colorado team. We tipped off season 5 against them and Ballard was the Bears top scorer that game. He finished with 10 points in the rematch, but we actually ended up blowing them out and freshman two guard Dusty Harrison decided to throw some salt in the wound as time ticked down. Even Junior Galindo and Chauncey Cantrell, two former walk-ons, got into the game. That's how out of control it got here in the second half. And look at this play right here, by far one of my favorites of the entire ball game, Dusty Harrison. He had it stolen from him by Joey Ballard, but he takes it right back and scores, showing Ballard that there's a new number 24 on campus. 
Moving on to number 13, we have the first breakout game from the dynamic duo of Pierre Hamilton and Jacques Diggs, and it came at the most opportune time as well. We only had a handful of games left in season 3, and UT Martin squared off with Murray State at home near the end of the season. Whoever won this game would own the top spot in the conference with three games to go, and the Skyhawks ended up putting on a show. Stealing the show in the second half was the underclassman backcourt of Pierre Hamilton and Jacques Diggs. They put up 17 points and three assists combined on the game off the bench. And this was back when they were still learning behind Easley and Saunders, but these two would step into the starting role next season after the graduation of Saunders and Easley and more importantly, would become very close friends with a lot of chemistry on the floor with one another. He had 12 and eight at the half, and he's continued to add to those totals in the second. But Hamilton, how about his three-point shooting? Not anything special, but he'll hit one every once in a while, and that's all we really need for him. That accompanied by his playmaking, and he's gonna be a good player for years here at UTM. And the bench still playing well as Joey Ballard, he snatches that pass. Hamilton on the break, lob to Diggs, and one, and one. Hamilton and Diggs have done it again. They are a dynamic duo. Man, it's great to know that whenever Easley and Saunders graduates, this backcourt's going to be in very good hands between these two very close friends. As every time one of them does a nice play, the other one's there to greet them. As you can see, Pierre and Jacques. They are hype, greeting each other, celebrating, as it looks like that that match has put us over the top. Coming in at number 12, it's another rematch, this time against in-state opponent Memphis. The Memphis Tigers and UT Martin matched up only a couple months prior to this game, and UT Martin's first ever trip to the NCAA tournament back in Season 3. We had some bad luck with seeding, as Memphis had a top 3 offense in the nation and took us down in a close game in our first ever appearance in March. But we ended up rescheduling a rematch the following year on Christmas Day, and it was everything we bargained for. Our Hawks were able to overcome an 11 point deficit thanks to outstanding team basketball in the final 15 minutes, and were able to sneak out a tough one thanks to a little luck on the final possession of the ball game. UT Martin would end up facing Memphis three times throughout this entire series, sporting a record of one win and two losses, with all three meetings being decided by 10 points or less. All three were really good games. Ran offensively for Memphis now with eight seconds. It looks like they're gonna go to work. Here comes Jimenez, he rotates it to Everett. That one, oh! It just rimmed out. They got the look they wanted for the lead, but Everett, left it a little too long and it just leaked out utm catches a break down the stretch they hold on for dear life to get revenge 71 to 70 here on christmas day number 11 was an upset to remember with ut martin shocking tennessee 68 65 in season four's opening game Beating an SEC team on the road is a huge deal for a smaller conference team, but this win meant even more for us. Three seasons prior, back in season one, at the beginning of this entire journey, we played the Volunteers for the first time, and it was pretty much what you expected. We ended up losing by nearly 30 points, but the fact that three years later, we pulled off the upset, it really showed the leaps we'd finally made as a program. Tennessee, it was a down year for them. They came into season four outside of the top 25 unranked, but that should not take away from the feat that we accomplished that day. Saunders led the way with 21 points for UT Martin, and it was a pretty crazy finish to end it all. Something to say about that. How about 26 for him? And now that one's knocked away. Hernandez down the lane, but easily you turn it over, does not put his head down. He stays with it and knocks it away from Armando Hernandez. What a colossal defensive he can play. Inbound it cleanly with 6.7 left to go. Here comes Julian Shepard rushing the ball up. Walford gives it back to Shepard from 40 feet. It rims out. Oh my goodness. What a finish to this game. Shepard just off the mark to send it to an extra period of play and UTM once again scrapes by another power conference opponent. We're a third of the way through the list guys here at number 10 we'll be showing off UT Martin's first ever postseason win. The Skyhawks did just enough in season one to get them in the playoffs. They went 12 and 15 in the regular season and their 500 conference record secured the seventh seed in the postseason tournament. 
who awaited us was the two seed, Austin P, a club that won both regular season matchups against us. What followed was the most cohesive and complete performance all season from our year one roster. Our Skyhawks would jump out to a shocking 26 to 14 lead to get off the ground, and it would be a lead that they never relinquished. The Skyhawks never trailed in Coach Carter's first ever postseason game of the series, with Shaquille Hammond, Dwight Easley, David Giles, and Marcus Saunders off the bench, all scoring in double digits, paving the path to an 11 point victory. And even though the Skyhawks would fall to the eventual champion Samford in the next round, this started the trend of Coach Carter always doing well in postseason play throughout the entirety of this series. He always had his boys ready for primetime games. Another solid game for the freshman. Once again, surprise, surprise in double figures as he finishes the game with 11 and the final score would be a difference by 11, 66 to 55. UT Martin never in doubt tonight for our Skyhawks. We'll keep it in season one for number nine with the freshman backcourt of Dwight Easley and Marcus Saunders pulling off one of the most improbable comeback wins of season one. You saw in the previous game on this list UT Martin, their first postseason win, but it was a photo finish to even make these playoffs. As I'll set the stage for you, with two games to go in year one, UT Martin was 8-10 in league play and the Ohio Valley Conference only takes its top eight teams to the postseason. We lost the tiebreaker to Southeast Missouri and trailed Moorhead State by a game and a half for a playoff seed. So pretty much UT Martin had to win out to make the playoffs, beginning with a matchup against our top dogs in the conference, Eastern Kentucky. And we had to play them on the road in their gym. EKU was dominant early with their lead ballooning to 16 points at one point. The Skyhawks had a mountain to climb to keep their playoff hopes alive and somehow, someway, they would come through. Thanks to our up-and-coming backcourt of Dwight Easley and Marcus Saunders, UT Martin defied all odds by winning this shootout against the league's best team, 88-80. Saunders finished with a whopping 32 points off the bench would be a career high for his freshman year at the time, and Easley had shades of Steve Nash with 19 points and 8 assists on the game. This was the first time we saw the young tandem break out, and it would lead to a memorable three-year run for these two young men. But that's all that matters is that he's having it tonight. Is he done? Not even close. Another three-point bomb from the corner. 32 points for Saunders. And we would ride that momentum to a huge win and big part to those two young men right there. Combining for 53 points, 10 assists, and 9 made three-pointers is Dwight Easley and Marcus Saunders. Resulting in an 86-80 huge comeback win versus the now 13 win, four loss Eastern Kentucky Colonels. Feels like we're binge watching season one right now as Dwight Easley's game tying free throws to beat Murray State in overtime to clinch a playoff spot in season one, it comes in at number eight. Back in game number nine, we talked about UT Martin having to win their final two games of season one to secure a playoff seed. As in that first game, they stunningly knocked off Eastern Kentucky to stay alive as we just saw and had one more game that was a must win this time in the season's finale against Murray State. Southeast Missouri, Murray State, and UT Martin were all fighting for that final playoff spot. Southeast Missouri would end up losing their final game of their season, meaning the winner of UT Martin versus Murray State would clinch the last spot for the postseason. And once again, UT Martin suited up for their second straight must-win game away from home. The lead would change 12 times throughout the endeavor, with both teams struggling to take control. These kids were well aware of what was on the line and did not give an inch. This was one of the most intense games on the series, including some hard fouls, bodies crashing for rebounds, but UT Martin would fall behind by five points with three minutes left to play. With their season hanging in the balance, the three-headed monster of David Giles, Shaquille Hammond, and Marcus Saunders played huge roles in a comeback effort to force overtime. Those three players would combine for 54 points and that would end up setting the stage for Dwight Easley in the first overtime. Easley ended up shooting a forgettable 1 for 8 from the field on the game, but down 2 with seconds left to go in overtime, Easley called his own number to keep the season alive. Joey Ballard, as the Skyhawks won have one last chance to save the season, Dwight Easley, who has had an awful game, such a forgettable night, but the freshman stays resilient as he takes it to the Murray State defense, drawing a foul as Dwight Easley steps to the line for two of his biggest free throw shots of his young career. The first one is up and it just rattles in. The first free throw is always the hardest in these situations. 
and has missed all seven of his attempts from the field. He's got one more though. He's not done yet. The second one is good as gold. And it is not up at six Giles with the rebound starting to break. Dwight Easley taking his man one-on-one. -on -one, hands it off to Giles. Big shot from way beyond the arc as Easley. Not a good day shooting, but seven assists for the freshman. And Dwight on this possession continues to find his teammates. Shaquille Hammond, his head, legs are a little tired. The shot was a little short, but it rolled in with the friendly shooter's touch. 16 points for Shaquille Hammond. And that shot would propel the UT Martin Skyhawks forward to the biggest win of Coach Carter's young college coaching career so far. Number seven, UT Martin taking care of Tennessee Tech in season three's conference championship for their first Ohio Valley title in school history. Year three was the first real breakout season for UT Martin, their first time winning the regular season title in Coach Carter's tenure. As Easley and Saunders hit their groove, they were now upperclassmen, and sophomore center Christopher Fay was playing the best basketball of his career at this point, as he was a star during the postseason tournament. And overall, the Skyhawks produced 23 wins on the year. After losing in the second round in seasons one and two, the Skyhawks soared to the championship this time around, and the team waiting for us in the other locker room was Tennessee Tech. We seemed to match up well against the Golden Eagles, but that didn't stop Tech from taking an 11 point lead halfway through the first half. The Skyhawks looked a little nervous to begin their first game in the spotlight, but thanks to 10 first half points from Saunders and then 10 second half points from Easley, the Skyhawks came out hungry in the second half, cruising to a 17-4 run to finally separate themselves from their opposition, and they finally punched their ticket to their first March Madness appearance in school history. One more shot, and that'll be too much for the Golden Eagles to handle. Come on, Easley, take us home. Another brutal screen from Blaine Fry frees up Easley, who nails the three after it takes a high bounce off the front iron. Ten points for number ten, as Easley had all of those points in the second half. As he bleeds out the clock, and UT Martin is heading to the first March Madness in its school's history. This number six game will stay in season three, with point guard Dwight Easley pouring in a career-high 29 points in a chippy win over Moorhead State. This matchup with Moorhead State came in the twilight of Season 3, and at this point in the year, the Skyhawks were the hottest team in the Ohio Valley. Winners of their last six, they were sitting at number one in the conference at this point, with six more games to go in the season, and had to travel to take on the Moorhead State Golden Eagles, sitting right behind them in second place. Marcus Saunders missed a few games around this time because of a finger injury, but this was his return to action game, and immediately he made his presence felt with a quick four points, two assists, and two steals in the first five minutes of game time. The Skyhawks were already on the cusp of pulling away in the first half, but some extracurricular activity occurred under the rim. One of our reserve forwards, Gene Schofield, violently fouled Moorhead State's two guard, TJ Clark, at the rim, and those two had a heated exchange that nearly ended in a bench clearing fight before the ref stepped in. And once order was restored, the Golden Eagles started playing with a chip on their shoulder, responding with a 31 16 run after Clark and Schofield's pushing and shoving exchange, and they also had some trash talking to throw our way as well. Our Hawks needed a boost in the second half, and with Saunders sitting out for a while due to foul trouble, Dwight easily started filling it up, finishing his night with a career-high 29 points and four tray balls to boot. Easley almost single-handedly defeated the Golden Eagles in their gym to stay perched on top of the standings, and we would eventually win Season 3's regular season title. And after this game, for the rest of the series, it felt like Moorhead State became a very chippy team when we came to town. Two and a half left to go. These teams continuing to still trash talk and play physical as easily with a physical steal. He might have bumped the receiver, but he gets away with it, leaks out, and he throws it down with some taunting at the end of this one. Man, this game's been so intense. A lot of language between these two teams that I can't repeat on the mic and easily. What a career night for him, as that is the cherry on top of the Sunday. Wow, what an intense game that was. Easy with 29, that's a career high for the junior point guard. We've reached the top five games, guys, and at number five, we have Jacques Diggs and Chris Fay putting together super performances in a playoff game to avoid an upset. Again, we stay in season three where UT Martin was entering as regular season champions of the Ohio Valley, winning nine of 11, entering the postseason to secure the one seed in the tournament. The Southeast Missouri State Redhawks would be our first opponent, and they may have been 
the eighth seed, but hey, this is a spot where the Red Hawks had become comfortable at this point. As in back in season two, Southeast Missouri won the OVC tournament as the eighth seed. So for the second year in a row, they come in as that eighth position. And they were planning on continuing their reign of terror as the underdogs in season three against us this time around. And that's exactly what they did. They were in it the entire game, nearly cutting our remarkable season short. That was until we dialed a freshman's number, Jacques Diggs. And boy, did Diggs answer the call. And remember, this was Diggs before he was our star player. At this point, he was still a freshman trying to make a name for himself. But after 13 points and only 7 minutes to keep us afloat, he showed flashes of future stardom and he received a curtain call from the fans attending. This game was played at a super high tempo, a lot of quick possessions and points scored, but as time elapsed we started feeding our 7 foot sophomore, Christopher Fay. The Red Hawks started to tighten up their perimeter defense, which left the paint exposed for Faye to have a field day. Chris Faye would end up having a tournament to remember, averaging a double-double through the three games of the tournament, but this quarterfinal game is what set it all up for him. 11 rebounds and 29 points on the night for our 7-footer, and 29 would remain his career high till the day he graduated, and UT Martin would survive the upset alerts, and it was a very entertaining game converts and we win this game by nine and the fans of UTM continuing to taunt these Red Hawks. Christopher Fay, what else can I say about him tonight? 29, 11, two steals, 12, 15 from the floor. Easley and Saunders combined for 28. They had 23 of those 28 in the second half and of course the one man show in the first half Diggs with all of his 13 points in the first 15 minutes We were able to overcome this upset bid Number four Marcus Saunders delivers a game-winning layup to stun the 15th ranked Kentucky Wildcats When UT Martin traveled to Lexington, Kentucky at the beginning of season three I wasn't expecting much from our Skyhawks we were coming in at 0-1, fresh off of a really bad loss to Winston-Salem State from the MEAC Conference. It was a game we really should have won. On top of that, Coach Carter, at this point in the series, was 0-3 against top 25 opponents. He had lost to number 14th ranked Tennessee back in season one by 22 points, then two losses to number 12 Florida and number three Washington in season two, with both those defeats coming in at 10 plus points. Not to mention Kentucky's sparkling all-time record of 529 and 64 at home heading into that contest that speaks for itself. So when the Skyhawks walked into the intimidating Rupp Arena that day, Kentucky was expected to begin their season 1-0 with the help of a tune-up game. Simply put, the Skyhawks said F all of that and put on a clinic, shooting 56% in the first half against what many people thought would be a stout defensive unit in this new season. UT Martin took a six-point lead into the break, perhaps catching Kentucky on a bad shooting night. However, Coach Calipari would eventually get his group to wake up. The Wildcats started to play their game with a couple of timely turn turnovers forced on UT Martin and used their athleticism on offense to find easier shots, and they finally started contending for the lead. With only a couple minutes left, Easley and Saunders tallied 30 points together on the game while Blaine Fry paced all players on the glass with eight rebounds on the night. These performances set up a thrilling final couple minutes, including an a legendary ending that people will remember for years to come. And Saunders continues to challenge the big men inside, and he gets it done again. One of the best slashers in the Ohio Valley Conference, he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best defenders in college basketball and he is winning most of these battles. So, Kentucky down by two with 34 left to play as McLeod receives a pass, 30 seconds left. He pulls it, is Leon McLeod taking a three for the lead and knocking it down. McLeod, one of the last guys you'd see pull it from three point range in any situation, let alone this one, and he gets it to go. So, Skyhawks back on offense, this is the last chance to do it, the last chance to try to take this upset. Doing the list down with 4 seconds left to go, Saunders on the perimeter, receives a screen from Faye, he's gonna have to hurry, fires, beats the buzzer, and Saunders has put it down! He's done it for UTM! 
Marcus Saunders with the shot of a lifetime. He helps the Skyhawks with a huge last few minutes to complete the upset, the program changing upset. Oh my goodness, what a game. Your UT Martin Skyhawks fresh off of a loss to Winston-Salem State. They walk into Lexington, Kentucky and take down the Wildcats, the 15th ranked Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky has an all-time record of 529 and 64 at the Rupp Arena. Make that 529 and 65 today, thanks to 20 points from Marcus Saunders. Well guys, no matter how far we get into the list, Marcus Saunders keeps popping up. Number three is his 40-point performance against Fairleigh Dickinson. UT Martin was off to a much better start in Season 2 as they traveled to New Jersey for their final out-of-conference game against the Fairleigh Dickinson Knights, owning a respectable 6-3 record so far. Marcus Saunders was moved to the starting five for his sophomore season, and he was turning heads, but I don't think anyone was ready for the performance he showcased that night in the Garden State. Saunders went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the leading scorer from Fairleigh Dickinson's conference, a six-foot senior named Tavares Blanchard, and the underclassmen took Blanchard's lunch money all night long. The Knights eventually succumbed to Saunders, switching to a 3-2 zone to try to slow him down, but Saunders remained in his zone, picking out all the soft spots, ultimately pouring in 40 points for a new UT Martin program record. From that day onwards, we ran our offense through number four, ultimately cultivating in Saunders, finishing with 1,676 career points. That's the most points any Skyhawk player tallied in their career within this series. And if not for being our sixth man in his freshman year and having to come off the bench, I firmly believe he would have pushed 2,000 total career points. Just not enough offense from FDU tonight. And the defense has a lot of people questioning what they're doing leaving Saunders off the inbound wide open. Yes, that is 40 for him tonight. And I think that is a perfect place to cut this game and get it wrapped up as behind a new school record for points in a game. Tennessee Martin knocks off FDU by 15 up here in Teaneck, New Jersey. And Saunders with an unreal performance tonight, 40 points behind seven made three balls. Not only did he shatter his personal record of 29 points, he also breaks the school record of Shaquille Hammond's 38 and back in year one against Chattanooga. Number two, UT Martin's double overtime win in the round of 32. In season six NCAA tournament, the Skyhawks were fresh off their first March Madness win in school history, a moment we waited 46 episodes for, and it was worth the wait. In the second round, we'd square off against Virginia Commonwealth, one of the best defensive teams in the whole field. UT Martin was playing with house money at this point. They could have came out complacent and rolled over because at the end of the day, they had already reached the pinnacle of this journey after defeating Georgetown in the first round. And that's exactly what the Skyhawks did not do. They came out so hungry and it was all fueled by our 5'9 captain, Jot Diggs, as he set the tone. Come to find out, Diggs was only scratching the surface of what he had in store for us tonight. He'd break his career high in points, dropping 35 in the most dramatic game of the entire series, but it wasn't a one-man effort, as junior power forward Teron Gardner tallied a double-double inside. We also had a huge performance from our 6'7 point guard Darnay Betancourt, who transferred from Oklahoma. He sat a year on the bench and played small forward with the Sooners, but with his court vision and ball handling, he transitioned to our point guard spot in the final year of Skyhawk Hoops. At first, he struggled with the move to point guard, but played up with top competition in the tournament to finally show off that Oklahoma potential. This was the most intense game of the series, so let's hop in and check it out. A double overtime win over VCU to become the first ever Ohio Valley team to reach the Sweet 16. So see Martin, shot VCU on a buzzer beater. Diggs flashes strong side corner. He finds him, it's a good look, but Shock Diggs is short. Oh man, oh man. An overtime game here in the round of 32. I'm actually losing. tonight. 126 left to go with UT Martin again in front by a single point. Barnhill looking for another assist. It is Paley this time. The threes coming in succession this game in the extra period of play. That's only VCU's second made tray ball on the contest, but it comes at a perfect time. But look at Jacques Diggs fading away from Gardner as the give and go works perfectly. As you can tell, the junior doesn't want to go home early. I don't think anybody on this floor does. Diggs 
Back in the 2-3 is VCU, so he's covered. Swing pass to Harrison. He will take the lead. The underclassman, Dusty Harrison. Diggs right now, all he's doing is putting the finishing touches on one of the most historic performances in NCAA tournament history. Two for two for Diggs. 35 points, a career high. Kevin Holt, make or miss, it doesn't matter. UT Martin is moving on to the Sweet 16. The Skyhawks continue to dance. The dream is still alive. We're finally at the end, guys. It was hard to rank these games as a whole list, but this number one choice was the easiest to make. With UT Martin shocking Georgetown 55-51 for the first March Madness win in program history. Season 6 was UT Martin's third trip to the big dance within our journey, but the first two ended in heartbreak. We took a loss to the six-seeded Memphis Tigers on the chin back in Season 3, and didn't have enough offense to compete with the fourth seed Kansas in Season 5. Georgetown presented a much different flavor from those teams, however, sporting a very tall lineup that played sound defense, highlighted by college basketball's eventual player of the year, Tariq Nyland. Nyland, a 6'10 senior, was putting up almost 25 points a night whenever we matched up with them. And even though we put our best lockdown post defender on him, Blaine Fry, we still knew that he was going to be a handful. So Coach Carter took the aggressive route. We wanted to attack Nyland personally to potentially get him in foul trouble early, and it worked to a T. Nyland ended up exiting the first half after picking up two personal fouls in the first three minutes of game time and the Skyhawks executed. Georgetown looked like a completely different team in his absence. They were struggling without their All-American on the floor, aiding the Skyhawks to soar to an 11 point first half lead at one point. And Jacques Diggs once again found his rhythm. Diggs came into March on a cold streak, shooting a measly 31% from the field in UT Martin's three tournament games prior in the conference which made his March Madness performances even more remarkable. How was he able to turn it around so quickly? He paced all players with 24 points against Georgetown and of course followed it up with 35 in the VCU Tango. Georgetown wouldn't let us off the hook so fast, however, as Nyland checked back in, he had some fresh legs to drop 14 second half points to make things very interesting at the climax of this contest. Throughout the entire series, Coach Carter built his team around having a very fast tempo and constructed a really exciting offense in Martin over time. But in season six, UT Martin transitioned to a grinded out ball club that always out hustled their opponent. And that's what pushed them over the edge in this one. Thanks to three incredible defensive plays down the stretch to shoo away the Hoyas, UT Martin held on for their first ever win in March in program history and this season six roster developed the reputation of maybe not being the most talented roster we've had at UT Martin, but being the most hardworking and resilient team we fielded here within the six year series. Out of nowhere for his third block. He hustled all the way back after giving it away. And this hustle play might have just topped Betancourt's on the last possession. So, Georgetown has a back down to a one point game. It's a six second difference between shot clock and game clock. It's all on the line here. It's do or die for UT Martin. Here we go with Diggs. He's going to flash. He's going to take it. He's open. And Shock Diggs might have just sent UT Martin to the next round. This is to make it a two possession game. UT Martin's first ever NCAA tournament victory is on the line. And Shock Diggs comes through. 55 to 51. Two possession game. No time to get a shot off. UT Martin has won their first NCAA tournament game in school history. Coach Carter waited six years for this moment. You subscribers have waited six years for this moment. And finally, it has come. And it feels like nothing else we've ever felt in this series. All of the losses in the postseason, it all comes down to this. And Coach Carter delivered to upset the Georgetown Hoyas after these three colossal defensive plays down the stretch. We had the Darnay steal. We had the Teron Gardner block after he turned it over. He got his ass back on the other side of the floor to reject the best slasher on Georgetown. And then Evan Schneiderman setting back Hadley. Three crucial defensive plays that really told you how much Tennessee Martin wanted this game. 55 to 50.
Well, the top 15 games from the series is finally concluded. What an amazing list and awesome final look back as we finally pull the plug on UT Martin. Coach Carter ends his tenure with Skyhawk Hoops at 125 wins to only 60 losses with three Ohio Valley Championships, three appearances in March, a Sweet 16 berth, six all-conference players, and three Conference Coach of the Year awards. But it's all coming to an end, as on the next episode of the College Hoops 2K Legacy Mode, we will be narrowing down the next job openings for Coach Carter, and I'll let you guys vote as we further his career on a bigger stage. Can't wait to bring that to you guys. Thank you for everything during this series, and I can't wait to pick our next school to make even more memories in the future. Stay tuned for that, guys. This is College Sports Survived, signing out.